नमस्कार बहुत स्वागत है आपका ई विद्या चैनल नंबर नाइन और आपके साथ अगले आधे घंटे के इस सफ़र में मैं याशु गांधी जैसा कि आप सभी को पता है ये वक्त होता है हमारी क्लासेस का ई विद्या का हमारे अलग अलग विषयों के सेशंस का तो इसी श्रृंखला में हमारा आज का जो विषय है वो है सोशल साइंस क्लास नाइन्थ और जो टॉपिक है वो है मल्टी नेशनल कंपनीज एंड इकोनॉमिक डेवलपमेंट और क्लास नाइन्थ के इन स्टूडेंट को आपको विस्तार से इस विषय को बताने और समझाने के लिए हमारे साथ जो विषय विशे विशेषज्ञ जो एक्सपर्ट स्टूडियो में मौजूद हैं आइए सबसे पहले आपका उनसे परिचय करवा देते हैं हमारे साथ जो ख़ास मेहमान हैं वो हैं एन दिल्ली से प्रोफेसर ऑफ इकोनॉमिक्स प्रोफेसर एम वी श्रीनिवासन सर गुड आफ्टरनून एंड नमस्कार सर वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू यू इन द सेशन तो सर से हम इस विषय को समझें उससे पहले दो खास बातें आप सभी के लिए कि आपके पास हमारे नंबर सेव होंगे नोट डाउन होंगे अगर नहीं है तो स्क्रीन पर लगातार दिखाए जा रहे हैं आप उन नंबर्स को नोट करिए और विषय से जुड़ा हुआ कोई भी सवाल इस सेशन के दौरान अगर आप सब्जेक्ट एक्सपर्ट से पूछना या समझना चाहते हैं तो आप पूछ सकते हैं इसके अलावा अगर कोई भी और क्वेरी है हमारे कार्यक्रमों से जुड़ी हुई या फिर आप कोई फीडबैक देना चाहते हैं तो वो भी साझा कर सकते हैं लगातार स्क्रीन पर हमारा जो ईमेल का पता है वो भी दिया जा रहा है तो बात इकोनॉमिक्स की हो रही है सोशल साइंस में इकोनॉमिक्स की क्लास नाइन्थ है तो जाहिर सी बात है आपका जो टैब या आपका पेन और जो पेपर है वो आपके साथ होगा तो बिना आपके इंतज़ार को ज़्यादा बढ़ाते हुए चलते हैं आगे और सेशन की करते हैं शुरुआत सर जब हम इस विषय की बात करते हैं मल्टी नेशनल कंपनीज एंड इकनॉमिक डेवलपमेंट तो आ, किस तरीके से आ, आज हम जब इस विषय पे बात करते हैं तो मैं चाहूँगी कि सबसे पहले हमारे स्टूडेंट को हमारे बच्चों को इसके बारे में बताया जाए कि इसकी ज़रूरत क्या क्यों है इस विषय को समझने के थैंक यू मिस गांधी एक्चुअली जस्ट स्मॉल करेक्शन टुडे वी आर गुड डिस्कस अबाउट योर चैप्टर इन क्लास टेन जैसे क्लास टेन सोशल साइंस टेक्स्ट बुक यू नो दैट दी देर इज बुक बट आई एम शोइंग यू Uh, understanding economic development so today we are going to discuss about a topic called multinational companies and how multinational companies are functioning in india and uh, in other countries and how they contribute to economic development okay and uh, before we start this session uh, my dear students um, i'm sure that your teacher must be teaching this topic uh, maybe it's in ctc um, fourth topic fourth chapter in the textbook maybe you may be learning in the after 2 3 months also but it is better that um, uh, to make it my uh, interaction with the uh, uh, today's anchor um, and with you and i have some questions which i am going to show you in the screen please uh, look at the screen and then there are some questions that i am going to uh, read for you and uh, you can read these questions uh you can also keep your pen with you and if you are able to answer before i start teaching i start uh, explaining these things very good and uh, you can also we i'll also go to uh, i'll show you the answers uh, at the end of my presentation today so i'm going to read out the uh, uh, true or false questions if you know correct answer you can just say true if it uh, like can uh, true or false or if you're not sure you can write not sure so let me read out the questions for you Uh, the statements basically these are all statements you need to see whether it is true or not uh, these are all pertaining to the multinational companies a company can be multinational only when it produces and sells uh, goods and services in at least five countries second multilateral trading system is helpful only for a company that operates within one country multinational third multinational companies are mainly engaged in producing capital goods only fourth import and export activities are mainly done by government companies five world trade organization facilitates multinational trade across countries question number 6 statement number 6 multinational companies also face creative destruction that involves continuous innovation of goods and services and technological change some multinational companies outsource goods and services to make their final or finished goods 
Ford is a multinational company whose headquarters is located in London. 9. Restricting the import of a commodity is one of the forms, one form of trade barrier. 10. It is a must for a multinational company to become member of the World Trade Organization. These are the 10 statements uh, you can write whether it is true or false and at the end of this session, if time permits, we will uh, give you the answers for these um, statements. Okay. Uh, let me coming back to what uh, uh, Ms. Gandhi was saying about why we have to study this topic. Bilkul. Multinational company, why we have to study this topic. You know that you are studying uh, history, geography, economics, political science in classes 9th and 10th. Today we are discussing in class 10 and in channel number 10 about uh, a topic called multinational company. If you see the textbooks, uh, you, this is an important topic. Which is, which is which you can find in all subject areas, not only in economics component, but also for example in history also you will see about how the uh, Britain Woods institutions like the World Trade Organization and many more international organizations facilitating in the, in the topic on globalization. If you see the geography also, you must be seeing um, agriculture, manufacturing industries, transport, storage, communication. There are many industries located in different parts of India. Okay on what basis they are located actually. Okay. So, uh, even in the geography also you will find very important um, uh, aspects of these multinational companies. And then uh, in case of political science also, for example, the government <coughs> plays a very, very important role in the functioning of multinational companies, in the performance of multinational companies. That is why you will find many times the um, honorable prime ministers of India, prime minister of India and the chief ministers of many states, they go abroad inviting companies. Uh, to uh, invest their companies in their own states or in the whole country actually. So, um, in order to understand um, history, geography, economics, political science, so if you are able to understand, uh, if you get some introduction about multinational companies, it will be helpful for you. Okay, so, it is also giving you, uh, cutting across disciplines, you will have a better understanding about this topic. That is why if you know, once you know this multinational about multinational companies, you will also know many other things in different subject areas. That is why I thought we will discuss today this topic. Absolutely, sir. And as you have said, this thing is understand karna, understanding of children is very important that exactly multinational companies are and what kind of is it is different from other uh, companies. Hai unse. Oh, that's very right question. So, um, students, today I'm, I have brought something for you. You can see uh, in the screen uh, some other things. Okay. So, uh, let me show you in the um, camera. You can look at the screen. You can see this is the um, a variety of um, poha uh, available in the northern part of India. So, this is uh, brand name is Sri Sauhan. Okay. This is the company which is located in somewhere in uh, Delhi and it produces poha and it sells within the country. Okay. And then whereas uh, you can have this one. What do you see here? I am sure you must be drinking and your master, your mother must be troubling you every day to drink milk. <laughs> right, okay. right, right. So, this is a milk packet. Uh, this is produced by uh, um, uh, something called Amul. This is uh, produced by a milk cooperative located in Gujarat, but it is also having offices all over India. So, it is also uh, a, a, a kind of a cooperative. Um, so, this is second one. Whereas, if you look at this one, look at this one. This is a, um, uh, this may looks very new and it is a box. It, this box contains lot of boxes, lot of cards. You may be knowing, many of you must be knowing, you may be playing with your friends also in your school and it is called uh, Pokemon cards. Okay. And uh, then I am showing you this Pokemon cards, the company located in uh, America. And you will find um, children across the world are used playing with these cards actually. Let me give you another example. If you look at this one, look at this. Uh, you may be, I am sure uh, your school or your, uh, your house also may be playing this game. And uh, this game is called Monopoly. Okay, so you see this Monopoly game. Uh, look at the screen. And this, this game is also, um, this, the packet, entire packet is produced in one country. And it is available across the world. Many children playing, eh? many children uh, India, US, Australia, Europe, many people, children from all over India, they are <coughs> all over the world, they are using it actually. And this is the another example of a uh, coconut oil, parasite coconut oil. So, if you see this also, it is also um, uh, produced in somewhere in the southern part of India, in Kerala, but it is available all over India. 
So, if you see this, then the finally I will just uh, uh, show you and show that some of your parents, you may be drink, you may not be drinking coffee, but your parents must be drinking coffee. This is Nescafe coffee powder. So, this is also uh, a product of a company. So, uh, if you see the last one I am showing you today, this I am um, sure you must be brushing every day and brush and um, uh, paste, toothpaste. Okay. Uh, these are also two com made by two different companies. And if you look at this, all these examples, why I am showing you all these examples? Because uh, there is a certain difference between the multinational company and other companies. For example, uh, Amul. Amul is a district cooperative, but it may be selling a product in the name of brand Amul but it is not a multinational company as of now. Okay. Whereas the Pokemon uh, is a company that produces Pokemon cards and it is located in US but it is also having offices all over the world. It is selling cards and then Monopoly game. Uh, the producer of Monopoly game is also um, an example of multinational company. So to tell you uh, this Colgate is also a multinational company. And the coffee, Nescafe coffee, if you see, you may be drinking coffee, but can you believe that this coffee powder is available somewhere in Africa, South Africa, somewhere in Brazil, the coffee uh, beans, they are brought to India and it is powdered here, it is available in uh, shops, whereas this company is located in somewhere in Europe actually. So, if you look at the multinational company, multinational company is a company that produces goods and services. Um, and sell in different countries. Okay. So, if you see from that angle, the Amul is not a multinational company and the Poha, Sri Chauhan, this is also multinational company, it is not a multinational company, whereas the many of them, but the Parachute is also not a multinational company because they are all producing goods within India, selling goods within India. Whereas the other ones, the toothpaste, brush and, and Pokemon, Monopoly, they are all, <coughs> they are all something which you can see. Um, uh, they are <coughs> they are produced and they are sold in different countries. Before like going to this also, please uh, when you see this chapter, uh, read chapter, this chapter, when your teacher is going to teach you, you also should know some of the basic concepts. Uh, what are those concepts? Looking at, look at the screen. These are the concepts you need to have an understanding, some understanding. Exports, imports, import substitution, make in India, profits, wages, subcontracting, <coughs> outsourcing, foreign trade, migration and then foreign direct investment, foreign institutional investment, bilateral trade, multilateral trade, excise duty, foreign trade, goods and services tax. So, if you are when you are going to read this chapter in your textbook uh, thoroughly uh, which may take uh, more than 3-4 uh, classes in your, uh, in your uh, school and you will get to know all these technical terms. But I am going to use very briefly and you do not have to worry right now about um, what is these concepts about actually. But to tell you briefly, briefly the um, multinational companies came into being almost 300, 400 years before. You know that the East India Company, East India Company Gee, which, has, <laughs> which has come to India for doing business, they facilitated, they colonized us, they were ruling for almost the, the British government were like and the uh, East India Company were ruling India, colonized uh, India for 200 years actually. Okay. That is one example of a multinational company. So, what they do, the, if you look at the uh, way how the multinational companies are functioning, let me look at the, uh, uh, look at the screen actually. Believe it, I will also give you a warning. Today, I showed you all these brand names and uh, these companies and their products I am showing today, I explained to you. It is not shown with the intention of promotion, but Bil to provide some concrete real life examples Bil to understand the topic. Because we are saying that the platform is not only sirf samjhana, sirf study purpose, yeah. to make them understand. To make so, we them thought that if, you give, if I give you some, different, yeah, exactly. some concrete example of products exactly. and it will be like, uh, it will be better you, that you can understand. Uh, how a multinational company functions. Yeah, okay. Kisi ka koi promotional isme jo hamara udeshya wo nahi hai. Sirf samjhana apne class tenth ke students ko ki kis tarikhe se kam karti hai aur kya hai national aur kya hai multinational companies. That's it. Yeah. Yes, okay. So if you, um, uh, she has asked about how multinational companies are different from other companies. Other so, companies. So now the next issue is that you may be interested in how these multinational companies function. Look at the screen actually. These multinational companies. To tell you in brief, they mobilize capital. The first thing they do is that they mobilize capital and then uh, 
suppose you want to produce something say let me take example of uh, milk what will you do you will have to go you have to buy you have to have money first so for um, functioning uh, functioning of a multinational company the capital is very very important okay so the uh, the uh, multinational companies procure the the get capital through stock markets about which you will know in higher classes but in simple terms they mobilize money from different people people from within country and from outside the country also when the east india company also when they ventured from uk to india they mobilized capital from their country and then they they were able to build ships they they were able to mobilize people to come to india similarly multinational companies when they want to function they have to mobilize funds so the first requirement for a multinational company is that they mobilize funds and uh, when they mobilize funds they say that okay we will just collect funds from you and money from you and then we will give you uh, some returns as profits okay so dividend so they also uh, yearly they also give dividends to their um, shareholders okay so what multinational companies do once they come collect money then they have a plan what to do what commodities they produce they sell so the uh, multinational companies located in some offices some states for example some countries um the company with i am showing you today they are located in us and some other companies are here. indian also india also has many multinational companies i am going to show you a bit later let me tell you how they function actually so so they locate their factory they locate their registered office in one place from there they go to place where the land is available cheap so they set up factories over there and also they also look for labor because basically, many jo basic infrastructure hai yes. wo ek um, comparatively jo world market ke according jo ek reasonable uh, yeah. padta hai so what they do pocket friendly yeah so what they do they they look for uh, where the labor is available very cheaply where the cost of production cost of producing goods available very cheaply so they liquidate the land labor they also look for technology one major functioning of tech, uh, the multinational companies that they come with the lots of advanced technology okay so they uh, the technology and other many raw materials if they want to have uh, for example i told you about coffee beans mm -hmm. coffee is available in other countries so they know where the raw materials are available so they go and procure those raw materials and they also know the what technology that needs to be used so they use the technology and then they locate land where to set up factories and then finally you must have read in class 9 um by now must have like last year that um, how the story of palampur how land labor capital organization are used to produce uh, goods in the story of the, in the palampur village how pa farmers are producing paddy and uh, other other um, uh, producers how they operate in palampur so this is an extension of that uh, topic you can say that so the what they do they they also negotiate with the government for example multinational companies i told you that they work in more than one country okay so they work with more than one country only when they work in more than one country then we can call them as multinational company for example the um, the uh, poha company that i showed you today is not a multinational company as of now because they work within the country only so at least more than one country they have to function okay that is the major definition of multinational company and also they have to produce goods and sell goods produce goods and services and sell goods and services across countries or it, even if it is more than one country you can say that it's a multinational company but it is it should be beyond one country okay and uh, there are many things that are happening when the multinational companies function actually okay it requires laws for example they have to work with the government government should allow them provide them basic infrastructure facilities like roads electricity and um, other essentials they also have to allow the um, allow them to bring funds to within the uh, other country actually so the government laws also very important point when the multinational companies have to operate bilkul okay. kis tarike ki kya policies hain kitna cooperation milega kitna to us pe bhi bahut zyada jo hai budget mein usko kitna part usme diya gaya hai kitna importance di gayi hai to that is also very important factor yeah. so apart from that also there are like for example uh, these days uh, one of the reasons why the multinational companies you know how many multinational companies are functioning in india उटनी 
thousand multinational companies are coming have uh, they are functioning though there is, there are no so all multinational companies are uh, not having headquarters in india only a few um, are having headquarters in india i'm going to give some list a bit later let us see so the international organizations like the world trade organization world trade organization is a um, a group of countries together they come together uh, they become members of uh, this world trade organization and it is located in um, europe uh, geneva and what they do is that the um, this multinational the countries country governments once in a uh, once in a uh, once in a while they meet together and they negotiate among themselves how they can allow companies to import and export goods and services okay uh, so when um, this is for this you need to understand uh, one term called bilateral system i told you the concept bilateral and multinational bilateral means when the trade negotiations when two company two countries for example india and australia if these two countries are negotiating how they can trade among countries it is called bilateral if uh, more than two countries are uh, engaged in trade for example india australia usa china uh, pakistan nepal sri lanka if all countries come together negotiate how they can um, trade goods and service it is called multilateral trade system okay so the world trade organization what uh, it does was that it is promote it is promoting multilateral trade system multilateral uh, trade negotiations okay so the company the country governments are coming together uh, they negotiate among themselves how they can import how much they can export because whenever uh, goods are um, imported from one country to, to another country when goods are exported from one country to another country those governments those countries which are receiving these imp uh, uh, goods they also uh, collect taxes they are called customs duty okay so uh, the uh, when they collect customs duty sometimes they charge very high for example if you are buying a computer this computer company may be located in america but it is selling it is manufacturing in china and it is wanting to sell in say india so when india it comes to india it also like um, uh, has to tax sometimes it may be 300% it may be 200% or it is 50% and so on the country hmm? to country company to company vary yeah. karta so, hai so uh, uh, the taxes the wto G. helps these countries to come to understanding about how much they can tax okay Bilkul that's the way the uh, multinational companies expand their businesses bilkul maaf karega sir main aapko interrupt karna chahungi ki kisi bhi country mein investment karne se pehle dhyan dena hota hai wahan ki policies aur taxation system ka jo aapne bataya aur hame karyakram mein samay ka dhyan dena hota hai to bahut kam samay bacha hai to main chahungi ki usme bachon ko jaldi se isko cover up kiya jaye okay so <laughs> what i'll do is just uh, uh, just to give an example here the, this uh, look at the screen and if you look at the screen these are the logos of many multinational companies most of them are functioning across the world could you see any companies uh, any indian companies located here just mark the uh, just uh, just round in your pen or just name their name you will we will come to know in the question actually so the you have you found out the names of the mncs can you find out which mnc is located in uh, headquarters in india uh, uh, miss gandhi can you just point out where which company of any logo one logo can you find out find out hmm. wipro tata okay ha tata copy so these are some examples of multinational companies whose headquarters are located in india okay so uh, what are the other examples of indian multinational companies state bank of india indian oil corporation tata group infosys wipro limited aditya billa group reliance industries adani group industan unilever limited Okay, these are some examples of Indian multinational companies. Okay, so if you look at the way um, uh, how the multinational companies are earning their income, I'm just giving example of. Look at the screen. Uh, this screen shows the uh, trend in some twenty years time. So if you look at this twenty years time, you will find majority of the companies increasingly are moving from um, other sectors to pharmaceutical industry. So if you look at this uh, uh, green color, which one is bigger? Green color. and if you look at 2014 it is a green color one all other multinational companies all the other goods and if you look at the gray color the light gray color uh, 28% so that is coming under the automobile industry so automobile industry pharmaceutical industry chemical industry these are two uh, in, in, these industries in which you can find many um, uh, many multinational companies earn their incomes in india okay 
So I showed you what is a multinational company. I also gave you some example. So if you look at um, now, let me come back to the question that I ask you. Okay, the first question: A multinational company can be multinational when it when it produces and sells goods and services in at least five countries. Is it correct? So I told I, you that more than one country. More than one country. Need not be in five countries. Second question: Multinational lending system is helpful only for a company that operates within one country. It is not correct. Multinational means across countries, so it is false. The third um, statement: MNCs are mainly engaged in producing consumer and capital goods. Is that true? Yes, it is true. Fourth statement: Import-export activities are mainly done by government companies. I told you that many private companies are engaged in import and export. Fifth. WTO facilitates multinational trade across countries. That is true. And uh, sixth statement six: Multinational companies face with creative destruction. Yes, it is true. And then some MNCs outsource goods and services to make their final uh, or finished products. True. Uh, eighth, Ford is a multinational company whose headquarters is located in London. Is it correct? It is not correct because it is located in America. Okay. Uh, restricting the import of commodity is one form of trade barrier. Yes, and then ninth, tenth, it is a must for a multinational company to become a member of the World WTO. See, it is uh, WTO is the group of governments. It is not a company. It's not a group of companies come together to form a WTO. Okay, so these are the um, I just showed you some introduction to the multinational company. बिल्कुल बहुत ही vast topic है और बहुत आधे घंटे में समेटना बहुत मुश्किल है बहुत सारी वो हैं माफी चाहूँगी आपको भी जो मुझे interrupt करना पड़ा लेकिन हाँ जितना आपने explain किया वो बहुत अच्छे से I hope हमारे students को समझ में आया होगा लेकिन अभी हमें session को यहाँ जल्दी से wind up करना पड़ेगा sir thank you so much आपने बहुत अच्छे से explain किया हमारे बच्चों को और इसी के साथ अभी के लिए इस session में इतना ही देखते रहिए N C E R T ई विद्या नमस्कार